Hello everyone, I'm Erica. And I'm Akila. Welcome, Welcome to Heart Chat. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Harsh Chat. Today, we're talking about how to talk to your children about COVID-19. Yes, yes. So before we get into that, let's do our check-ins as always. <laughs> so Erica, what's up? How are you? I'm okay. I feel like every time we do a check-in, it's always a comment for me about missing <laughs> <my> family. <laughs> I was just thinking, my little baby niece, I haven't seen her since Thanksgiving. That's oh, wow. Months, since November. Oh, yeah. Six months already. Wow. That's a long time for a baby. <laughs> so It is. I, you know, I FaceTime her all the time and talk to her on there. And she talks back, you know, nowadays. So I'm just like, goodness. And her second birthday is going to be in August. So I'm like, when am I going to see her? When am I going to see yeah. you again? <laughs> what? <laughs> so let me start playing like, baby face. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I miss my family. I, I really do miss my little niece. That makes sense. You know, you were, even though, you know, they don't live and she doesn't live close to you, you were seeing her, you're trying to see her as often as you could. I feel like a lot of people can relate to you and to that right now, just missing family and like not being able to see people and doing the things that they were going to do before. It's just, I, know. I understand that. Yeah. I told Ashley, I was like, I feel like a deadbeat aunt. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't seen her in six months. That's how, I, and I know it's not Erica. her control. <laughs> the fact it's it's just I'm laughing because the fact that you feel like a deadbeat aunt and your niece lives in Texas, like <laughs> I know, with <laughs> such a distance to still, you know, that is not even true. I'm pro- I'm sure Ashley was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, and then Bria's like, well, she's not going to remember anyway because I'm like, mm hmm, because y'all live in Texas. So, exactly. But, <laughs> but anyway, Akila, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm doing okay. You know, just managing like everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. It's funny because working from home, you would think would be the best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> and in some degrees, it is, but in another degrees, it's really not. Like, <laughs> I feel like the conception of people working from home is that they have all this time to do all these things, and it's really not. I really have the same amount of time to do some of the things that I might want to do as I did actually in the field. <laughs> like, the only thing that has changed is that I don't drive, which yeah. probably saves me like an hour. <laughs> sometimes even more based on if I'm driving like long distances from my house. Yeah. But, so it's just trying to manage, trying to set boundaries. So I'm not really working all day sometimes in terms of breaking that transition between working at home and being at home. Right. Well, you've got a lot on your plate. Like you do a lot of different things, but that is true. <laughs> I, mean, I just didn't know your calendar. But, you know, looking forward, I know it's going to really die down for you at some point, which is going to help Ooh, yes. everything. So <laughs> that's definitely something to look forward to. But people only saw what you had to manage on your calendar. <laughs> I and, feel, you know, Eric, that's totally funny. I feel like if it was like a, a line graph, it would show like right now, it's just like a roller coaster going up, up, up. Mm-hmm. But soon it's going to go down, down, down. So, you know, it's going to be like, woo. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just get in there. Well, hang in there, girl. I'm trying. You too. <laughs> I know. Well, moving on with our, with our topic for today, how to talk to your children about COVID. We thought this would be important to talk about because this is a, a really tough conversation to have because really, where do you start? How do you have this conversation? It's new for everybody. So there's not like an expert out there to say, hey, this is how you talk to your kids about you know, COVID-19. There's things, of course, experts can look to and relate it to and try to, you know, work from there, but it's new for everybody. This is definitely a tough conversation to have because even as adults, we're trying to manage and figure out, okay, what does this mean? What do we do? And how do we move forward? I agree with everything you said, especially that last part, even as adults, we're trying to manage, you know, this and the uncertainty. And I think that is one of the, like the first things is to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves <laughs> mm-hmm. to be able to talk to the children in our lives. Exactly. So when we're talking about children, again, when you talk to children, 
they're all different ages. And even yes. with age, kids are different. Some, you know, there's different maturity levels. So Absolutely. we're going to just start with some basics, but you can always adjust it to your child. Absolutely. So I think a good place to start would be safety, such as washing hands. That would be a great place to talk about health. You know, we have this virus going around, so it's very important. When you touch something, we have to wash our hands. Visuals are really, really good um, yes. for children. Yes. So you, and I, I've seen videos out now. There's um, yeah. Yeah, videos out. If you're artistic, you can draw pictures or you can show, you know, you could do a science experiment. I've seen that kind of showing your kids what's going on so they can kind of get that visual and see. And there's a virus. We have to wash our hands. You know, we have to cover our face because you want to protect your kids. So I think starting with the safety items is your first line of defense because we want to keep them safe. Start there and then you can build from that. And I think when you're you're talking about safety, when you're talking about really any of these things, it's kind of making sure to choose your words wisely too, because you don't want to instill fear mm-hmm. per se, because this is safety should be talked about just in general and at all times. It's important to kind of watch the words that you're saying and make sure that they're developmentally safe and right. so that the child can understand you. Because I, I completely agree, Eric, what you said, you know. Yeah. So going back to what you said about, you know, parents talking to their kids about safety anyway, another place to build when talking about safety is when we talk about, hey, we have to go to the doctor or you have to get a shot or, you know, when you're sick, you have to take medicine. So these are things that most likely you've talked to your kids about before, about staying staying healthy and things like that. So just adding on to, to what you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. So another thing would be adjustments, talking to your kids about the adjustment, you know, things have changed and these are the changes and this is what it looks like. And this is what we have to do to protect ourselves starting there. And like like what you said, Akila, I think it's very important when you were talking about, you know, as parents kind of being prepared themselves, you can also think about what you want to say and prepare it. Yeah. And have it written down because... It's, it's a scary conversation to have. It can be, you know, and of course your kids might have questions that could distract you, especially if you <laughs> have a lot of anxiety about it yourself. Yeah. So it's best to be prepared and kind of think through how you want to say this and what you want to say. And I think kind of this ties into just like when we're talking to kids about scary or unknown things that they, you know, anything it's important to remember that it's it's okay to say you know i don't know but i'm gonna find out that information and let you know kids mm-hmm. are much better when we're honest than when we're like trying to make things up on the spot and we really don't know mm-hmm. right. <laughs> they can they can like pick it up they're a lot more observant than a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people think i think it's really really important to just be as honest and open with them and upfront with them as possible, as right. developmentally appropriate. Right. And have this conversation when, when you're relaxed and when you're calm, because I can imagine, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about, hey, we had Disney World trip plan, and now, you know, we can't go. The parent is stressed themselves because, hey, I had this plan, I, I paid for mm-hmm. that. I've heard a lot of people talk about trips that they had and paid for, and now, you know, they can't get their money back. And so you're telling your children, hey, you know, we're not going to be able to do this right now. We'll have to do it some other time. Well, when? Well, why? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you're stressed about it yourself. Now you've got your kid asking you all these questions. So you really want to make sure you're prepared for that because they probably will ask a bunch of questions and that you're calm because you don't want to take the frustrations of what's going on out on your kids. Yeah, who are just, they're being kids asking multiple que- all these questions. <laughs> yeah, and you want to set an environment where they feel like they can come to you and ask questions yes. about this because all the time I would hear kids talk about things they saw on the news and the parents like, oh, my kid doesn't watch the news. Well, they heard it all <laughs> there, so. <laughs> exactly. You know, they're going to hear what's going on, even if like they're not watching this, but they heard you talking or listen to your phone conversation or something like that. They, they hear things and they pick things up. I really like what you said about letting the child feel safe to come talk to you and all of these things, because it's going to be really important to let them express their feelings and feel comfortable enough to express it to you. And that, that really does mean as the parent or the adult, the guardian, making sure 
you focus on not just what you're saying, but how you're saying and how you react to what the child is saying. Because as soon as there's a reaction of like anger, frustration, annoyed, anything, that child is going to stop talking to you. Mm -hmm. It just feels unsafe. They're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I can't ask about that. So I guess I can't ask about anything. It was really, really important. Like you were saying, Erica, that, you know, we watch, watch our own stress and frustration levels when we're talking to children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's very important to be aware of your emotions because you, like you said before, you don't want to instill fear because you have to think about this is going on right now, but this could be really traumatizing. You know, it's traumatizing for Mm -hmm. adults already. Imagine how traumatizing it can be for a child when that parent is instilling fear in them. The effects aren't just right now. That can have yes. down the line in the in the future, you know. Yes. So that's why it, you know it's very delicate. We have to be very careful about it. And I think another big tip, as hard as this one is, this is hard <laughs> in general, to stay present, stay yeah. in the now, because we don't know that much about what this is going to be like or what our life it's going to be like. You know, we're all trying to figure that out. So try to stay present as much as you can. I definitely agree with that because when we're not staying present and we're thinking about the future, that can cause a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of, a lot of those emotions. And because of it's so uncertainty, it's even hard to kind of plan for some of this stuff. So trying to take each day, day by day, <laughs> it's really important. And, you know, something else that really it could be helpful is kind of even taking it day by day, also like practicing like coping skills with your children and like mm-hmm. deep breathing, things like that, because that can also help with your own mental health, but also help the child feel safe and manage their emotions as well. Right. And try to do some fun things because yes. there will be a point where, you know, we can look back. So just thinking about a kid, I wouldn't want them to look back at this time and be like, oh my gosh, remember that? And I was so scared and this and that and all, all these scary things were going on and we didn't know. But you can look back and say, oh, this thing happened. It was kind of weird, but me and my family had to stay home, but we did this and we did that. And we had a great time, you know, because mm-hmm. you can try to make the most of it for your children, you know, because like we said before in the video we did about family time at home. Yeah, I think you can go back and listen to that one for some tips on what you can do at home. But there's different things you can do at home because it's it's different. When I was a kid, I didn't have you know a stay at home mom or a stay at home dad. So those moments were like, oh, you're sick, and your parent gets to stay home. It's like, oh, okay, this is kind of you know, kind of cool. It's nice. <laughs> oh, we take the day off. Okay, like everybody's playing hooky today. <laughs> we get to be <laughs> home. So it's of course more than just that one day, but you can try to make some. Um, you know, fun moments you can look back and say, hey, try to find the opportunity in it. It's basically what I'm trying to say. I definitely agree with that because for the adults themselves, it is a trying time. We understand a little bit more, but trying to make it our best to help the children around to have have some good times. I think that's a a really good idea. Right. And don't beat yourself up because everybody's doing the best that they can. Everybody, you know, is going to make mistakes, but... Mm -hmm. Just if you try and keep going, try to stay positive, you know, because I, we say, oh, try and stay positive. Oh, that's so easy to say. But what I mean by that is don't stay in that funk when you're constantly beating yourself up and kind of staying in that, that negative realm because it's not going to be helpful for anybody. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of interesting resources. Like if you Google like COVID-19 time capsules and things like that, which also provides like tips on what to do and like, creates this, like, how old were you? Like, creates this fun activity for parents and their kids around the virus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think that can also be a way to talk to your kids about it through, like Eric said, like you said before, Erica, you know, through like pictures and visuals and coloring and making it not so scary for an age appropriate for them. Exactly. It's tough because it's a tough line between okay, this is serious. I need you to wash your hands. I need you to cover your mouth. Don't touch that. Don't, what are you doing? It's just tough. (laughs) You you want to be serious. Like, I don't want you to do that. And I need you to understand that. But then you don't want to be like, oh my gosh, um, now I'm so scared. Uh, what did I do? I I mean, I don't understand this. So it's definitely a slippery slope. It's, it's hard. It's, this is not an easy conversation, but 
you know, and it's I, one that has to be had. Absolutely. And I think Erica, part of this is some of these things are things that should have been discussed already. <laughs> so <Yeah>. like <laughs> when, it, when it comes down to it though, like we should always be washing our hands. We should always be covering our mouths. We should all like, these aren't new concepts to be talking to. But these kids you know. don't do it. These kids <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> and now it's, it's like, you have to do that. To be on it. Yeah. You have to be on it. So I completely get it. It's just kind of just being repetitive with it. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Cause you're being wanna, repetitive to it without it. Right. You want to keep your kids safe. So you're like, I need you to do this, but then you don't want to scare them at the same time. It's hard to even talk about let alone do. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, repetition is key. Repetition, that's one you can always go back to time and time again. Repetition is key. Yes, absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, share your comments below. Keep the conversation going. Let us know um, some tips that you may have that work. And we will catch you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Harsh Tech today, where we speak from the heart. We hope that you enjoyed our show. Catch us weekly on our YouTube channel and our website, which is heartschat.org. Be sure to follow us on our social media pages at heartschat. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or topics that you would like for us to talk about, email us at contact at heartschat.org. And for all of your personal relationship questions, visit our website, heartschat.org. Click the From Erica's Heart tab to ask your question anonymously, and we will respond within 24 hours.